Okay, let's continue this series of videos where I am basically giving every single Warframe a more comprehensive review and rating system. So we're going to be looking at Oberon. Oberon is basically based off a goat and he is also considered a Paladin Warframe, whatever that means. So let's have a look at all of his abilities. His first ability is called Smite. So the way that Smite works is that it sends out these missiles that will then seek out targets and deal a considerable amount of damage depending on who was the initial target. His second ability is called Hallowed Ground, so the way this works is that it puts out a carpet that then deals damage to enemies and also gives them radiation props from time to time. His third ability is called Renewal, so it's basically a heal over time so long as Oberon has energy left to heal people with. And his fourth ability is called Reckoning, which is effectively an area of effect knockdown. He also has a passive that strengthens all allied Kavat and Kubros, however this does not count Venari for Korra, and this also doesn't count any other companions, for example Sentinels and Moas. Let's have a look at some builds, and there will be two builds of these four that you see here that I will actually be using interchangeably. So the first one is this sort of extra utility build where I have 200% power strength, so I will be referring to that a lot more. Uh, basically this build is pretty self-explanatory for the most part. This particular mod right here being the augment mod this one is a bit of a flex mod so i will be changing it from time to time as part of the demonstrations otherwise we have energized guardian pretty much self-explanatory the other build is this sort of ultra healing build which is more for healing so you may see a bit more than for example 400 armor being shown on the screen at any point in time at that point that's actually using this build here. The other build being the extra utility build that will give me 400 armor because of that 200% power strength. Otherwise, this build should be pretty self-explanatory as well. Now, for those of us who feel really hardcore and are actually not new players at all, we have, spoiler alert, the Umbral build. So this is an Umbral Oberon build. It is pretty damn strong and it might actually be really, really good come the sentient ship and all of those sentient memes as part of scarlet spear that might actually be really really handy to have a warframe like this with a whopping 1337 ie elite amount of health otherwise there's also for example a build like this which i will be referring mostly relatively to at some point i'm not going to be using it though in these demonstrations but it is just something that you can have a look at when i talk about things to do with damage. Alright, let's have a look at Oberon's damage output. We'll first start off with his first ability being Smite. So the way the Smite works, like I said, it sends out these missiles that will then seek out targets and do damage to them. Now the amount of damage that they do is actually a direct portion to the amount of health that the initial target has. So for example, if we have a Butcher and a Corrupted Heavy Gunner right here, let's say we use Smite on the Butcher. We're only doing 27 damage to that Crowded Heavy Gunner after armor, so that is not particularly strong. But if we use it on the Crowded Heavy Gunner instead, and we only focus on the Crowded Heavy Gunner because they have armor, we're doing 108 damage to that Corrupted Heavy Gunner after armor. And that's because we are taking a much larger amount of damage when we take a portion of the Corrupted Heavy Gunner because the Corrupted Heavy Gunner has more health. Now, as you can see, that damage was in fact affected by armor. So that brings us to one of the major things about Oberon, which is his ability to completely strip armor. Now, this is a permanent strip of armor as well. And the amount of armor that is reduced is entirely based on your power strength. So if we bring up our ability screen, you will see there that the armor reduction is at 60%. And this is because I have a build with 200% power strength. Now, the amount of armor that is reduced with each subsequent use of Reckoning is always going to be 60% and it's 60% of the target's base armor, which means unlike something like Fracturing Crush, the amount of armor that is reduced does not gradually or rapidly decrease depending on how much armor you're reducing. So because of that pro tip, you'll probably want to be saving this particular combo for larger enemies because you are effectively dumping a lot of energy into these abilities. And that's how Smite works. It takes a portion of the target's health and then spreads that evenly between those missiles and then those missiles seek out enemies and destroy them. So that's why even if you have something like 200% power strength, you can't actually kill anything in one go. You will need to use multiple Smites in order to actually kill them eventually. Usually about three should do it. Also, incidentally, it turns out that the amount of damage it, that is taken into each missile is also affected by shields. So, for example, if we choose this Arca Hecate, 
we then end up doing quite a lot of damage in terms of radiation damage to all the nearby enemies, so that is pretty damn strong. Before we then start being affecting itself. But as you can see here, even then, it's not particularly effective for killing a large group of enemies. It's really not even that effective for killing one enemy as well. Now, in terms of other ways of damaging enemies, we also have Hallowed Ground. So one Hallowed Ground being used against these enemies, obviously it's not going to do a whole lot of damage, but you can actually ramp that up by quite a large margin by simply stacking a bunch of Hallowed Grounds on top of each other. So the idea with Hallowed Ground is that you're able to use up to four. You could either spread it out for some more radiation procs, which we'll talk about later, or you could actually stack them on top of each other for even more radiation damage. Obviously, again, it's affected by armor, so let's get rid of their armor. And let's just renew those stacks of Hallowed Ground, and suddenly we're doing about 800 damage per tick to these corrupted bombards, and it's still a bit slow. But eventually they all die. So then the big question is, how do people actually use Hallowed Ground to do damage? Well, some people have actually built Oberon around strength, duration, and range for the use of Hallowed Ground. I personally don't think it's all that worth it. You're kind of playing to a weakness at that point, in my opinion. Instead, there might be a much more easier solution, which is to use an augment called Hallowed Eruption. And the way that Hallowed Eruption works is simply this. You put down your first Hallowed Ground, and then by activating it again, you actually deactivate Hallowed Ground. But the amount of damage that that Hallowed Ground would have done had the enemy stayed within its duration is then applied as if it's some form of burst damage. So again, as you can see, we've actually taken out a decent chunk of the enemy health, but there is of course another way to make sure that this ability works a whole lot better. Obviously the answer is to simply remove their armor, like so, and then when we deactivate Hallowed Ground, we actually take out a pretty sizable chunk of their health one more time, and that is instantly dead. That is 10,000 radiation damage, but because it's against unarmed enemies, that is actually just straight up 10,000 damage, so that's really, really good. Although, ultimately though, you are still putting in a lot of effort and a lot of energy into just doing some damage to some heavy units. Ultimately, this ability is much more reliable as a trash remover, so... That's definitely something you want to consider. If you intend to be fighting against a lot of trash enemies or possibly infested, then maybe Hallowed Eruption is a better idea, but otherwise I don't really see much of a point in using this particular augment. Oberon has another augment called Hallowed Eruption, and this augment I find to be completely useless. So, by using Reckoning, enemies start taking damage over time because they were affected by Reckoning, but as you can see here, these are butchers. <sighs> it's real damn slow. I could use Reckoning again, you can then stack it on top of each other, but you're already using 200 energy at base to do some damage? This seems like a real waste of time. And finally, in the way of damage, we have an augment called Smite Infusion. Now, the way that Smite Infusion works is basically by holding down your first ability, you are then able to infuse yourself with extra radiation damage. So, for example, here we have some Corrupted Bombards at level 140. If I were to shoot them with my arrows and try to do a headshot, how much damage am I going to do? What's that? 13,500 on the orange crit, roughly, thereabouts. Let's do that one more time. Okay, 20-something thousand. 20 something thousand, let's say about 20 something thousand. If I were to use Smite Infusion like so, I am now doing 200% extra radiation damage. So against these guys, that's 41,000 damage. That is 41,000 damage. And obviously because I'm doing extra damage against uh, enemies in general, because I have that extra radiation damage, that's 41,000 and 50,000 on the unarmored for some reason. Fif or rather 500,000, sorry, my bad. And now that I've taken out Smite Infusion on the same unarmored Corrupted Bombard, it's only 383,000 damage as opposed to 500,000 damage. And that makes a huge difference. Even though I have put Smite Infusion into the damage category, it can also function more like a support augment in the sense that you really want to bring it out during an Eidolon hunt 
or a sentient battle because sentients and eidolons typically have robotic health and eidolons have armor that is of the alloy kind which means for eidolons you get to double dip on that radiation damage which makes it really really strong so in terms of damage it's really that armor removal and that smite infusion that are propping up his damage i mean everything else seems really bad in my opinion so i would just be keeping that rating at six out of ten and Again, that is really being carried by that armor removal and spike infusion. Alright, let's talk about Oberon's survivability and right out of the gate he actually comes out with above average health and an average amount of shields. He also comes out with a slightly average amount of armor which is very interesting to use. Now a lot of what I'm about to say about Oberon's survivability can also be applied to his support capabilities as well. So that's why the support section is going to be a little bit shorter. So the first thing is that Oberon has a really good heal in the form of renewal. With 200% power strength you're able to heal a whopping 80 health a second. So, what does that look like? So against the Bombard Rocket, here I am taking a bunch of damage. But, as you can see here, I am basically healing through most of it. So that's really, really good. I'm also making use of that shield gate as well for those who are wondering, Hey, shouldn't you be dead already? Nope. I can kind of just chill here against this level 80 Bombard at least. Now this heal is pretty damn powerful, but it won't make everything absolute easy mode. To make things easy mode, you could potentially use two or three Oberons at the same time, and those heals will stack on top of each other, so that's going to be really, really good. Or alternatively, you could try and make it even easier by using something like Hallowed Ground. Now the way that this works is that Hallowed Ground, when you are affected by Renewal, will give you extra armor. In this case, I am getting 400 armor, which is making a huge difference. As you can see, each Bombard Rocket is now only doing maybe 200 damage to my health, thereabouts. Not that much damage at all. So, originally I had 225 armor at base. By standing on my own Hallowed Ground, I get 400 armor as a flat bonus that brings my armor up to 625 armor for those who are trying to keep up what that means is that my damage reduction at 225 armor which used to be 43 percent now goes up to 67 percent because i have 625 armor roughly i'm not really getting into the decibels with this particular calculation what that means is that i have an effective health increase of around about 75%, which is kind of why I'm surviving a lot more than I was before. So that flat armor bonus is already helping me survive in a much more incredible way. Furthermore, to make things even easier, there is actually an augment for Oberon's Renewal, which is called Phoenix Renewal. So let's say that this Bombard actually manages to kill me. This time it's actually a level 120. Look at that! I am still very much alive. Now, there's actually a 90 second timer for me to actually stay alive so that Ob Oberon's Phoenix Renewal can happen again. So provided I don't get insta-gibbed within those 90 seconds, I should be perfectly A-OK -okay to once again have a free life. So that's how Phoenix Renewal works. Now, everything I've just talked about also applies to allies as well. So I will just be briefly reiterating that during the support section. Now let's talk about a survivability specific point. And this is actually a point that makes Oberon's abilities even more stronger, which is the idea that Oberon is a rage tank. So a rage tank is basically any warframe who can utilize rage or hunt with adrenaline because they can heal themselves. So as you may have noticed from the previous demonstrations, as the bombard kept hitting me, I actually got energy back. And as a result, I actually never ran out of energy while I was using Renewal. So despite the fact that my build has a 100% energy efficiency as opposed to my usual 130, I'm not really running out of energy anytime soon. And that is really, really good because that means that Oberon actually has this sort of cycle of healing that goes on where so long as someone is attacking him, he loses health, that health then gets converted into energy, that energy is then used on his renewal which then heals him so that he can hit some more and the cycle continues and continues and continues and continues. So, so long as there are enough enemies out there, he will never run out of energy. And frankly, if he runs out of energy, that's fine. That just means that there's no enemies around and he should be completely healed. So that is also fine as well. You, you can also make good use of arcanes like arcane guardian if you really need that extra armor. That's not really a survivability tip. That's just more of a tip for you if you're struggling with staying alive even as Oberon. 
Since Oberon has some real nice healing and the ability to give himself armor as well, I would rate his survivability at a 9 out of 10. Okay, now we move on to the section about Oberon's support capabilities, and it's really just reiterating the first few points about Oberon's survivability. Again, Oberon is able to heal allies on a near constant basis, so depending on your build, you could be healing them for 80 health a second, you could be healing them for 86 health per second, you could be healing them for 155 health per second, depending on how much power strength you have in your build. So, for squishier Warframes in particular, that is a massive boon to their survivability. If you think about it, a squishy Warframe such as Titania for example would actually be relying on other things to stay alive so if you are healing at let's say a hundred health per second you're basically healing a third of their health every second so as long as they are still staying alive by their usual means they're now even tankier than ever before so that's awesome the second thing of course is the synergy with renewal and the hallowed ground which gives allies as well the flat armor bonus so again this is also a massive boon to any warframes who are lower on the armor scale for example titania so let's say the titania with 100 armor jumps onto a hallowed ground field and ends up with an additional 400 armor from the old build as opposed to this build which is giving 428 so that would mean that titania goes from 100 armor to 500 armor that is a damage reduction of 25% jumping up to a damage reduction of a whopping 62 and a half percent that actually doubles the effective health the titania has at that particular point in time so you can see that with warframes like titania banshee trinity this is actually a huge deal for them Furthermore, we also have Phoenix Renewal, which affects allies, so in much the same way that it affects you where you die, but you don't really die, and you have 90 seconds of, where you have to make sure you don't die in order to get that free life again. It's the same with allies, so that's really, really good. And finally, in the support category, we have Hallowed Ground. Now, the way Hallowed Ground works is that so long as you're standing in Hallowed Ground and therefore being affected by Hallowed Ground, you're actually completely immune to all negative status effects, and you also get cleansed of all negative status effects. Apparently, there are positive status effects. I'm not really sure what they are, but basically, for example, example here I have my Kuva Brahma and I'm not gonna get knocked over again. So because of all of these abilities being able to heal even your squishiest allies at a giant portion of their health and being able to give everyone a huge flat armor bonus as well as being able to cleanse yourself and your allies of status effects I would actually give Oberon support capabilities a whopping 9 out of 10. There is one thing that he is missing that would give him the 10 out of 10 and that is of course something like Trinity's energy vampire i.e. being able to give allies energy if he was able to do that oh that'd be a 10 out of 10 and that would actually be a little bit broken but he can't do that so he's going to be sitting at 9 out of 10. All right, let's talk about Oberon's crowd control. Now, Oberon has three forms of crowd control. His first one, of course, is Hallowed Ground, but this is more of a soft crowd control, per se. So the way it works is that it basically gives everyone radiation procs, and that actually means that they attack each other, so that's really, really good. And also, just a side note, this is further increased by the radiation damage changes. So as you can see here, with 10 stacks of radiation, these enemies are actually killing each other a lot faster now which is really really good so that's definitely something you want to look into if you're going to be using Oberon for a more crowd control based idea the alternative is of course to use smite as a single target knockdown which also does some damage as well but you really don't want to be using it as single target knockdown in my opinion you kind of want to be using it for damage i guess but you know that's entirely up to you how you decide to use it and finally we also have reckoning which is an AoE knockdown, so as long as you keep using it, they will have to get back up again. But I tend to use Reckoning more for that armor reduction, that's just my opinion. So whilst Oberon has many, many forms of crowd control, in much the same way that Titania has many forms of crowd control, let's be real here, two of them are knockdowns and one of them is soft crowd control that may be lost by targets who just simply walk away and eventually lose their radiation stacks. So because of that, I would actually rate Oberon's crowd control capabilities at... 7 out of 10, not 10 out of 10, just 7 out of 10. They're great, they're just, you know, a bit soft.
And finally, let's have a look at Oberon's kit usability. So basically, the idea is that Hallowed Ground, Renewal, and Reckoning are always useful, no matter what you're doing, in my opinion. But Smite does seem a little bit weak by itself, and I don't find myself using it all that much. The only time I really end up using it, especially purposefully, is with Smite Infusion. So because of that, I would probably say that Smite gets one point out of two, whereas the other three abilities get two points out of two. Okay, so if you're keeping up, that already brings the score up to 7 out of 10. We also have to look at Oberon's passive, and Oberon's passive is typically very useful, specifically because the fetch mod has been brought about, so ever since fetch mod came out, Oberon's passive, to me at least, would get a 2 out of 2, that brings that score up to 9 out of 10. So, so long as you actually have a cat or a dog with you, Oberon's passive is always useful. So again, you add all that up and I would give Oberon's kit usability a score of 9 out of 10. So with damage having a score of 6 out of 10, survivability having a score of 9 out of 10, support having a score of 9 out of 10, and crowd control having a score of 7 out of 10, as well as kit usability having a score of 6 out of 10, that would actually bring Oberon's average score to 8 out of 10. That's right, Oberon is an 8 out of 10 Warframe who is very solid where it counts. And you know what? Where he is weak, i.e. damage, there's always weapons like the Kuva Brahma, there's always weapons like sniper rifles and other assault weapons. So I wouldn't be too fussed about that. If you are trying to use Oberon for the damage that he does via things like Hallow Ground and Hallow Eruption, fine, go ahead. But I feel like you're really playing to a weakness at that particular point. Time. Otherwise, because he's a rage tank as well, what I like about him is that the thought process for builds becomes a lot less stressful because you don't have to worry too much about energy efficiency at that point because you have a really solid way of getting energy back in the way of being just a rage tank. So let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. If you disagree with any of my assessments and any of my scores, feel free to leave them in the comments. We can always discuss a little bit further if you'd like. Otherwise, do you think you'll be using Oberon? I think if you're new to the game, if you can get Oberon regular, you should be able to have a much better time dealing with a lot of content in the game. So that would be my recommendation right there. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Warframe content. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.